And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today I want to give you my first impressions of Foon Chain Magnet. Now, Food Chain Magnet, uh, you might say, why are you doing a first impressions and not a review? Well, other people have done reviews, so if you want to know how the game works and stuff, you can go see those. But I only have played this once, um, and I likely will not play it more, so I figured I would give my first impressions, just so you could kind of get where I'm coming from with this. And I go into this, I almost want to come on here in full armor, because I know I'm going to get flamed by the fans of this game because I didn't like it. But let me explain. I'll explain why I didn't like it. Uh, there was an ex you know, the first game was not a pleasant experience for me, and I understand what people will say immediately. I know you'll say you need to play more often, but let me get back to that. So I played Food Chain Magnet the other day, and it definitely was uh, a theme that attracted me. The idea of running a restaurant and having people come to your restaurant and get food. I love that theming to the game. It's a heavier game. It's a splatter game. One that I don't know a ton about splatter games. Um, I, I haven't played a whole lot of them. I, a lot of people say they're not necessarily, they, they thought they wouldn't be my style. That may be correct. This is only the second one I played. Although the first one I played a long time ago, the movie one, was fine. Uh, this one here was a very different beast. It's a heavier Euro style game, which again is not something that I dislike. I like a lot of these heavier Euro games. And it has a very strong interactive take that type thing where you're definitely in each other's face the whole game, which again I don't mind, although that's a little bit more wearying after a few hours. But I thought the theme was interesting. The components for the game are fairly bad. I mean, paper money, the board itself looks terrible. Now, the the cards and the artwork that it's on the cards is, is fine. It's a kitschy 50s vibe to it. And even though I suspect it might be clip art, it still looks good. And I like the feel that that gives to everything. It's unfortunate that the tiles and the board look straight up like a prototype. I mean, this game is ugly. The wooden pieces are fine that come with the game, the wooden components, but wow, when you put that board down, it looks like you're playing a prototype, and I just don't understand why a game that is this, I mean, this, this cover looks fine and everything. Anyway, so putting all that aside, the, the game itself, as was explained to me, so the, when the game I played, I played with two experienced players, and there was two of us that were new. And the experienced players knew we were new. I also knew going into the game that experienced players will win, new players will lose. I understood that completely. I said, hey, you know, would, explain to me enough to get us going. Give me some tips as we play through the game. I'm sure I'll lose. If I lose by 100 points, it is what it is. Well, I lost by 730 points. It was 850 to 30, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't that much, but it but it was definitely 800 something to, I think I got like 40. Not only that, but 30 minutes into the game, I realized I could not win. Like I literally could not win the game. Now again, that's because of a couple reasons. One, one of my opponents just was like <laughs> steamrolling over me. Uh, the second reason is that the, the game definitely is not forgiving for new players. You make a few mistakes early in the game and you're probably not going to win. So I know the response to that from people again is play more often, get better at the game. Sure. And again, mentally I understand that. Physically though, while I, am, I consider myself a fairly good natured gamer, I lose a lot. I get crushed a lot. I come in last place a lot. But I also consider myself to be a fairly good gamer. I pick up games pretty quickly. I understand them. And to be crushed by over 800 points is demoralizing, to say the least. Going in knowing you're going to lose is one thing. Going in to know that you're going to have the heel put on your neck and squished into the ground. I'm just glad that it wasn't somebody else playing who had been new to gaming. They might have quit gaming and not played again. I mean, it, afterwards, I was just kind of... So mentally, I have to say, okay, Tom, you need to take that bad experience where you just got destroyed worse than I've ever lost a game before out and look at it. And, I, and again, I'm cognizant knowing that. So I know that people watching this will say, well, it's because you had a really bad first experience. Well, sure, but I know that. So let's dissect the game a little bit and talk about that. 
The theme of the game is, like I said, is one that I'm a real big fan of. But what I'm not a big fan of is that the theme seems kind of hit and miss. You know, sometimes the theme makes sense, sometimes it doesn't make sense. Uh, for example, the first person to throw away food in this game uh, gets a freezer, refrigerator, or something like that, um, that they can store food in. Nobody else can ever get one. It just doesn't make sense to me thematically. At some point, I might say, hey, that guy down there is storing food. It's a refrigerator? Well, that's newfangled. You know what? Maybe I should get one of those. And there's just little glitches like that as the game went by, or that this house wanted this particular set of food, and I had most of what they wanted, but they're not going to come to my restaurant because they wanted three pizzas and I only had two, or whatever. There was just various little things that I thought weren't very strong thematically, but the biggest one is these achievements that you would get that give you these special things that then nobody else could ever get. I also thought it was odd. There's one card in the game that turns your CEO into a CFO and gives you 50% more money every turn. That card, I said, when it was played, I said, that card seems broken. And both the other players said, yeah, it's not a very, it, it, it's a little overpowered. Then why, why is it not removed? You know, why, why play with that? And I, I think as the game went by, there's such cool things getting these you know, achievements and getting them done and being the first to do something, getting that is such a critical part of this game that if you don't get them, to me, that's, again, it's demoralizing. So I like Euro games a lot. I like games where I sit there and I build my own empire and do my own thing. But in this game, it always feels like, oh, you got that first. I can never get that. Let's compare this to a game I like a lot, uh, Civilization, Sid Meier's Civilization, which I've been playing a lot of lately. And in Sid Meier's Civilization, you can build the pyramids. You can build these wonders of the world. You are the only person to build these wonders of the world that give you special abilities that no one else can get. However, the special abilities that they give you that no one else can get, they can still somehow get these things usually through other ways. It's harder work. They have to build, you know, the pyramid, or at least in Civ 4, let you pick any government you want for free. Um, the, or you could switch governments or whatever. But you could still switch governments, just was a little bit harder. In Food Chain Magnet, if you don't get something first, or tie for first, you don't get it ever though, over the course of the game. Some of these special, really cool things. There's also very clear things that are good to do first. When we first played, they said, you need to pick one of these four guys when you're starting off. And I said, well, what if I wanted to pick somebody else? No, you want to pick one of these four guys. Oh, okay. And so because of that, there is a steep learning curve in Food Chain Magnet. If you're new, the only way you're going to win is if you're playing three other new people or less. So... The interactiveness of this game where you will deliberately open up new restaurants that will be closer to people, putting up signs that advertise stuff, I don't mind that. Um, it's going to be, some people are not going to like that in your face stress. I don't mind that per se. What I mind though is that this game definitely feels like it has a, almost like kind of a rich get richer problem. And yes, you can do different things and circle around and try to come back and you can cut people's legs out from underneath them. But it, once that boulder gets rolling, it's really hard to stop it. I think Food Chain Magnet's probably a pretty decent game, and a lot of people are really going to enjoy it. Uh, but I don't think everyone is going to. I think this is definitely a game that is for a very specific group of people, of which I am not one of. And what I'm trying to figure out is why exactly. Now, I already know what's going to happen in the comments because I've already... Uh, one of the players like, please play it again. I'll t I will play it again this time. You won't get crushed. You'll like it better the second time. Also, the catch-up mechanism, you know, the expansion fixes some of the problems that you had with the game. It's a much better set of achievements and things that you can get in there. Okay, fair enough. Maybe, maybe all that's true. It's just that there are thousands of games out there that I can play. And e most games, when I play them, I don't want that crushing sense of defeat that happens and happens and happens and happens and then until finally I'm good enough to complete on, the, on, a, on a level with everybody else. I don't have that kind of patience, I think, with any particular game. I don't like a game where you get crushed and crushed and crushed until you finally get better at it. To me, 
I'm like, ah, oh, let's go play a game that even if I lose, at least I can sit there and go, ooh, I feel like I have some cool things I can do next time. This one, I feel like if I played this again, I'll get crushed in the second game. Maybe slightly less until I eventually get better. When I was a kid, I had a friend who taught me Street Fighter. And he just destroyed me at it. And I said, I, I need to figure out the moves. He's like, well, just figure them out. Just do different combos. Here's some of the combos. Try to figure it out, and eventually you'll beat me. And after like him destroying me 20 times, I started figuring out combos, but he kept destroying me. And I said, you know what? I don't want to play Street Fighter that badly. This is the same feeling I have here. Then you add in the, the bad look of the game, you know, the board and all that, and the way the theme is not as strong as I want it to be. Like, it's really strong in some areas and not in others. But the, the whole game is about you need to be the first to do various things. And by doing so, you get these special abilities that you can then do cool things. I don't know that I like that that much. I, I don't know how to explain it to me. That just wasn't something that was fun. Uh, I don't necessarily want to be maybe striving for a goal. Someone beats me to it by a turn. And then I'm like backpedaling and trying to figure out what to do and then realize that I'm just going to lose. Maybe it's a tad too long also. I don't know. Yeah, I know. Food Chain Magnet is in the top 100 games at Board Game Geek. It is considered to be a classic and it has huge fans. People have been pleading with me to play this game for years. I have. Maybe I'll play it again in the future. Maybe. And I suspect that everywhere I go now, people are going to be like, come on, will you play it with me? You'll have a great time playing it. But I don't think so. I think it's the game that I don't like. Yes, it was a bad at first experience, but I think the game itself just lends itself to a game where you are constantly sweeping the legs out from under people. And while that's fun to do a little bit, it's less fun when it happens to you. Comparing it to another game this year, Barrage, which has that same feature in it. Barrage, definitely you can go after other players. But in Barrage, I always felt like even if someone was coming after me and taking the, the water I wanted from my dam and doing something with it, I always felt like there was a way around it. Here I felt like sometimes starting position can mess you over, someone can box you in, uh, someone can uh, kind of set up a combo with advertising that you have a hard time overcoming. And I don't like any game where 45 minutes to an hour before the game's over, you realize you can't win. My final turn of Food Chain Magnet, I did nothing. I looked at my things, I said, well, I need to do some, I needed to add another cook to make hamburgers because suddenly hamburgers were needed everywhere. I didn't have that at all. I needed to do that. I couldn't put one out. I couldn't sell anything this turn. So I literally didn't take a final turn in the game. And I just found that to be very lackluster. Those are my first impressions of Food Chain Magnet. I'm not saying it's a bad game. I think, you know, there's too many people who enjoy it for me to say that. I'm just saying it's not a Tom Vassell game. All right. Flame on. Here we go. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. Those are my first impressions of Food Chain Magnet. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.